What is up, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Between Two Coins. You're either listening to this on Spotify or on YouTube. You're watching it on YouTube. You know, they might be listening, actually, if they just put it in the background. Don't really know how people are actually viewing this. I just kind of went with that. Uh, this is episode nine of Between Two Coins, I believe. Nine or ten? Ten. One ten. of the two? Ten. It's yeah. ten. Well, I'm joined by two very handsome men. Uh, you know, Smay, as always, third greatest co-host Hello. in the history of all podcasts. And we're joined once again. This is the third time t shirt has been on Between Two Coins. He's becoming a star on the show. That's right. A regular. Uh, so I'm excited about today. I'm excited about everything we're going to discuss. But let's go ahead and jump. Let's jump into, uh, you know, T-Shirt, I want to know, you're a researcher. What is... Right now, probably the most exciting thing you're seeing in the crypto space that has you just wake up every morning with glee. Well, I'm doing better than I deserve. And the reason why is because I'm just so excited about Bitcoin. And I'll take these glasses off. Uh, yeah. So the biggest thing that I'm excited about is uh, institutional adoption. I'm also excited about uh, infrastructure, payment infrastructure, which speaking of which, uh, I think, was it today Chipotle announced that they're actually enabling uh, payments with Bitcoin, with, with crypto, through uh, Gemini, I believe. So that's pretty cool. I'm definitely excited about that. Wow. Have you guys heard about that at all? Uh, I heard about it when you told us about it at the planning meeting. Oh, really? Yeah. What's that grumbling I'm hearing? Oh, my. Wow. I could really go for a burrito, guys. Oh, did that? <laughs> did me talking about Chipotle make you start <laughs> feeling hungry? Yes. It's weird how the rumble comes from your mouth rather than your stomach. Uh... <laughs> Yeah. Man, I could go for some Chipotle too, actually. Dude, I'm about starving. It. Do it. You guys want to go get Chipotle right now? Yeah. I'd be down. All right, shoot. Let's do it. Between Boom. two coins on the road. Let's on the road. Work. Here All we right. go. And who's buying, by the way? Uh, You. Satoshi. Well, you with your Bitcoins, your Satoshis. True. Well, we, got, we have a budget then. Let's do it. Let's go. You know what? Let's go to Chipotle. Chipotle. Got it. Did it work? Boom. 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 Boom right here. Burrito time. Oh, yeah. Mm. Now, I already actually had lunch, but you best believe I'm still never missing an opportunity. Here's what I'll, here's what I'll say. The taste of this burrito is 10x what a U.S. dollar burrito tastes like. Mm -hmm. That's your initial reaction? It tastes like it was worth the Bitcoin. Well, you know, here's the deeper thing about it. Behind the scenes, I'm sure this is disgusting for people to have to listen to. <laughs> Hopefully you have your own burrito or breakfast or lunch or dinner, whatever you're listening to. This is a $50 burrito, and I'll explain why. Not just because Bitcoin can get more valuable. Uh, this video is not sponsored by Gemini, uh, even though Gemini was used for the sake of said video. Um... When you transfer money from your bank to Gemini, it instant wiring costs thirty dollars. I only tried to transfer twenty dollars over there. I should have paid thirty dollars to trans transfer it instantly. So, you know, fifty dollars went into the making of this burrito. Even more so, I did the math. When Bitcoin becomes a million dollars a coin, this was a three hundred and thirty dollar burrito, plus that thirty dollar transfer fee. That means I spent three hundred sixty dollars on this burrito. I just got to know real quick. That burrito looks like it's just conquering Tish Room right now. <laughs> like his face got significantly redder. <laughs> like, you know what though? I, I want to ask though. I want to ask. Based on your experience, how would you say the ease of use and the use case was for being able to spend Bitcoin? I had a moment there where the data wasn't doing so well. Seems like more of a me problem than a, any other problem. Most Chipotle probably have good data. So like pulling up the barcode. But but it did at first. It was giving me fits, and I was like thinking that maybe I was gonna not be able to do it. But then it popped up. It's super easy, dude. In the app again, the hardest part, that fifty dollars to get it in there. 
once you're in, you know, you just go to your, you go to cards. I don't think I'm going to do this. So you go to cards and then you, come on now, where, there we go. There's this like thing in the top right corner. Tells you how much you have. It tells you all the companies that you can use. Like for example, you can go to Barnes and Noble and spend Bitcoin. Bell's Outlet, Baskin Robbins, get yourself some ice cream. Bed Bath & Beyond, The Coffee Bean and Tea Leaf, GameStop, Hot Topic, Office Depot, ooh, Petco. You can go to Regal, go watch a movie. Uh, you just click on them, this barcode pops up. You scan the barcode, bada boom. So, it's that simple. Overall, that experience, would you say it was worth it? For a $360 burrito? Yeah. No. Yeah. No, no. it was not worth it. But it's worth the experience. I'll tell you that. Speaking of experience. I now joined an elite list of people who have bought way overpriced food. The 10,000 Bitcoins guy who ordered yeah. pizza. You're in that Step aside, now. guy. You're no longer the spotlight of people spending Bitcoin on food. Well, I mean, he still definitely is because that's like, what was it? It's like T.A. $65 Tim. million dollars or something now. It's okay. T.A. Tim takes the spotlight now as a trendsetter for food with Bitcoin. This was a really good episode to be on. Because I don't think there's ever been an episode of Between Two Coins where the, just chowing the, on a burrito. the guest got to have Even a, more so, a burrito. And thank I mean, you so much for paying for this, guys. I really appreciate it. Yes. This isn't the first time food's been on set. Jeb eats on set sometimes. Yeah. Well. It's, it's definitely the first time food's been over there. Oh, yeah. And that's why I'm being very gentle with it. Yeah, you be gentle over there. But I'll say, um, so the experience was pretty interesting. So we went to uh, our first Chipotle near us and tried to, it's tried to film it the... Uh, tried to film it the Respectable way. We we went in and we asked for permission. Yeah, but play the wrong game there. We asked for permission. We tried to be the nice guys. They said no. It was, it was terrible. We drove like literally 20 minutes to the next one. We decided to play the game, ask for forgiveness. So we had some uh, some hidden shots in there. The girl ended up being really cool about it. I think you could, they could hear it in the audio. Mm -hmm. She literally thought, it was, she didn't think it was going to work, first of all. And then when I told her that we were a YouTube channel, she was saying, oh, my, my dad's going to love this. So, you know, I, I, hopefully she yeah, ended up watching shout, it. Shout she, out to her. Yeah. She was a trooper. She thought it was cool. The other uh, the first place, Chipotle, they weren't about it. Yeah. Second place, we could probably live there. They, they seemed like they liked us. So I guess the real question is, you know, we did this whole stunt and it was fun. I think the real question now is the walk away. Is this something that is significant? for uh, the adoption of Bitcoin. Tishim, I'm going to let you answer that first. You got to get close to your mic, though. All right. I don't know how much stuff I have in my face. <clears throat> I don't think it's that bad. I think you're good. But I think it's very significant. I think that nobody has been able to pay with a currency that hasn't been inflationary ever before. Um, and it's not like today is the first time, but it's the first time for us that we've been able to go and pay for something with a non-deflationary currency. And of course, you know, we're economics nerds. We get it. We get why that's significant. Um, I definitely do. And so that's very exciting to me. For most people, they're just going to think, oh, this is, you know, it's cool because you got to pay with, you know, Bitcoin, this meme of a of a thing that's on the internet. But um it's it's very significant that we're gonna we can now take into our own uh, excuse me we wow. can now take into our uh, control <laughs> was that burrito, burrito 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 you got for real you can now take into your own control uh, you know your wealth and and make sure that it isn't just depreciating because of what a bunch of people at the Fed are thinking and feeling about the economy I, I think it's also really cool because you know this is the taste. Oh, yeah. I say it wasn't worth it just because I think in the long run, you know, it depends on how you really view that one. I think I think it could have been worth it in the sense of the trend setting. But once we see the Stripe network actually start to operate the way we know that it's coming with the, you know, the Jack Maller thing, we discussed that a little bit. But this was the this was the precedent like this girl, the cashier. She was super surprised. It's going to become a normal thing. It's going to become a thing like they're going to be asking, you know, they used to say uh, cash or card, cash or check. They're going to be asking, are you, are you paying Bitcoin? Are you paying this? You know, um, because I know with that, the way Stripe's going to work, it's going to have a special setup. This one was actually, this one was so simple. Apple Pay, theoretically speaking, I, I'm actually curious. 
I'm not going to try it again. What would she have seen? Because I prefaced by saying I'm paying in Bitcoin. Took it by surprise. Theoretically speaking, could I not have just like thrown it up there? Bing, boom, paid it. She would have never known I even paid in Bitcoin. But either way, it's going to set the trends for when Stripe actually starts finally working all over the place. Because I know that right now it's in limited places, limited stores. Uh, it's going to allow people actually to start holding more money in Bitcoin, knowing when you start partnering this ability to easily transact and pay for things in Bitcoin, and you start partnering with ways that people can start being paid in Bitcoin. So, for example, it's, one of our sponsors, and this it's not even this video is sponsored by, we just love them. We want to use them even as our company, Hedge. You know, it allows you to actually get your paycheck in Bitcoin. So now I'm not so worried about spending my Bitcoin because it's then hard. Now, now I have to go back and use my cash. I have to pay to buy it. There's going to be an exchange rate where I have to pay a fee. No, it's like I can actually get paid in Bitcoin to where I don't have to pay a fee on that. When we start seeing that blend, that is the transition, especially for countries like El Salvador, where they're already trying to transition to be able to pay for everything in Bitcoin. But then even countries, you know, countries like the United States that people are watching the U.S. dollar die. Not necessarily right now. I'm not saying this is going to explode this year. I do think the U.S. dollar is going to go up in value. But we're talking about longevity-wise. People are going to start waking up and realizing, now this U.S. dollar does not work. It is broken. Uh, I need to look for another way. Bitcoin is an option now. It's not just something we can talk about, hey, in the future when I can pay with Bitcoin. No, you can pay with Bitcoin right now, and it's getting easier every single day. And this is this is one of those ways it's easier. Yeah. So, yeah. I, I think it's huge. Um from the personal financial sovereignty standpoint. Um, but do I think that everybody is going to go out and only and, and convert all their USD to Bitcoin so, and try to live off, you know, off the USD grid, so to speak? No, I definitely don't think that that's going to happen. Um, I think that that already is happening in places like Argentina, right? Uh, there's all kinds of headlines I'm seeing daily yeah. where where folks down there are able to live on Bitcoin and their and their currency is so inflationary that it sometimes actually makes sense. In this in this bear market, I don't know if it's made one to one sense to to be in Bitcoin versus their uh, currency, but uh, I know that historic, like yeah. especially during last year, it definitely made a lot of sense. So, um, hey, yeah, pretty- you know where you know where it might have an uptick in things like this is anywhere where the the main currency is the euro. We just talked about that the other day. They're, they've hit all-time high inflation, and they they have not really adjusted their interest rates just yet, right? That was a staggering chart, that inflation uh, of the euro. Like so that. Th- th- anywhere that uses, utilizes the euro, it, it actually might be worth it to start transacting in Bitcoin rather than using – you know, it doesn't make sense in the United States or anywhere that uses U.S. dollar. Even probably places like you know the Bank of England and, and the, using the pound – why did I say the Bank of England? Just the country of England – it might still make more sense to keep your money in fiat currency there, but when we're looking at places like the euro, and that's almost, I mean, that's the majority of Europe, is it not, that uses the euro? For yeah. them, it might actually it might actually start getting to a place where it's like, it makes more financial sense to be using and utilizing Bitcoin to transact than it does to continue to just use regular fiat. Well, yeah. and here's my perspective on this, is that what's so powerful about this moment and, and it's, you know, as silly as this was in this little expedition to go get a burrito with Bitcoin, I think the bigger signifier here that really excites me is the fact that we had the option, mm-hmm. right? And it's it, it's not that, you know, are we in a hurry <clears throat> to get to a Bitcoin standard? No. But the fact that now I'm no longer bound to a single system, right? If I need to, I can pivot. It, that option, that do- the fact that that door, that gate just got built. Uh-huh. That is the powerful moment that we just kind of witnessed and that we're experiencing, especially with at Bitcoin 2022, with uh, the strike app and Jack Maller's announcement. And then we see um, it now even further than that, we have companies like Hedge that are popping up that lets you get paid in Bitcoin. We are now experiencing, we're living in the, the place where that door, the off ramp just got built. So now we don't yeah. have to be tied up to a system. And that in its definition is sovereignty. Because now at the end of the day, it's not just about being wholly in crypto. Having sovereignty is being able to make your own choices. And I think that having financial sovereignty, this is to the T financial sovereignty to have the yeah. choice. Even if it's a bad choice at the moment, it's still a choice. And I think that's a that's a powerful thing. So. Well, here's another thing. Watch as Bitcoin starts to prove its ability to be liquidated, as it proves its liquidity. And it's value state because that's nothing. I don't know about this one. I know with the Stripe Network, these companies are going to be able to receive the payment sooner. They don't have to wait seven days or whatever for confirmation. 
watch as they start to see the use case and the and the um, the increased desire to spend in Bitcoin. Oh, sorry, I'm not, not increased desire to spend it. Increased desire to see the the liquidity of it and how much it helps the business themselves. Watch there potentially start to be even discounts. Like for example, yeah. you can pay ten U.S. dollars. I think this burrito was about ten dollars after I think I did you know double steak after especially at, you know I watched the show on Thursday. I have doctor's order to eat steak, so that's you know I was just listening to a doctor on that one. But it was a ten dollar. Watch them be like, well, okay, it's going to be worth you know if you equated advice. it down to Bitcoin, it, it's going to be eight dollars mm-hmm. if you if you pay in crypto. Yeah. Because not only A, is it better for the company because they receive the confirmation sooner. But B, it grows. now they're, they're making that money in Bitcoin. They can decide. Because it's Bitcoin, they can choose. I'm going to put turn some of this into U.S. dollar to pay my bills because a lot of them are probably still paying bills in U.S. dollars. And I'm going to, you know, I want my company investing in Bitcoin as well. This is a nice way to receive Bitcoin without having to pay a transaction fee to turn it. Because right now, if, a, if, if I don't know why Chipotle, maybe Chipotle's, uh, it, it, their headquarters or what do you call it, corporate, is investing in Bitcoin, but they have to take U.S. dollars. They have to go there and put it into Bitcoin. They're gonna have to pay a fee on that, and and then if they want to liquidate it, obviously, then they have to pay you know taxes on it. Versus this, they don't have to. They don't have to pay any type of fee to transact into that. This is a natural way for a company, especially small companies, to be able to build up their Bitcoin portfolio to invest in and to build backgrounds and 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 security for in case of the hard times. Uh, they have Bitcoin. They can they can fall back on and keep their business afloat yeah yeah absolutely absolutely well, well oh well uh well. the other the other thing i'd mention is it's interesting what um companies are are have signed up for this and are, and are able to to uh, accept bitcoin through the gemini system it seems to me that we will we will know bitcoin will be much more widely accepted in this way once you can pay for two things gas and groceries Right with Bitcoin, I think that's where really and taxes, it, it, maybe taxes. Yeah, well, there's already states and cities that let you pay taxes, and that's what I'm saying. The yeah. more that spreads, I mean, like you just said, you know, your main things is groceries and gas, right, mm-hmm. and taxes. Yeah. Once you've landed there, I mean, there's really like at that point, there's no nothing well, we in the paid, way. I mean, Tim paid the taxes today in Bitcoin. Well, no, right? like at the end of the year when you have to go pay your taxes mm-hmm. to the government. You know, there's city okay so like your city and state uh, taxes yeah you can pay in crypto yeah. property taxes I, I, so bitcoin. On. I, i'm actually tell you that it might not be all crypto it's bitcoin. bitcoin bitcoin so no, but none of those stores the office depot was the closest thing to like a grocery store and obviously that's not a grocery store but like it's the closest thing to like a place where you could go buy everyday goods not just luxury items and for those of you who don't consider chipotle a luxury item i understand that but it's it is mm-hmm. it's a it's a luxury item um, a non-luxury item would be going to a grocery store and assembling the burrito for yourself. Yeah. Well, Stripe, so Stripe, again, this was, we were working through Gemini and their partnership with these different places, again, movie theaters, clothing stores, Chipotle, I think there's ice cream, so there's Baskin Robbins. Yeah. But when Stripe is up and running full, which I don't even know, we haven't tested Stripe yet, maybe that's another yeah. test we do sometime. You, you, that one, you can be going to CVS and yeah. Target and Walmart and, 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 and uh, you know, I don't know if they connected to littler ones like Publix or anything in grocery stores, but obviously Walmart and Target has grocery stores. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, Walmart. Walmart has, they were one of the first to actually have Bitcoin ATMs in the stores, mm-hmm. which we've done our research on that. A lot of, if you really, truly want to be a Bitcoin native, you can, because you're, you're able to do that there at Bitcoin, at uh, Walmart. But, I mean, the fact of the matter is you're paying so much in fees. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, it's probably not worth it. But, um, so, yeah, but the trend I've noticed is that all, a lot of those companies that are on there, they're luxury-type companies, they're lifestyle-type brands. And what they're what they're ultimately, the way that that's played out, it looks like, is that, you know, it's just made sense for them. They're not seeing a lot of risk by expanding out and accepting Bitcoin because their, their customer base aren't going to be, like, off-put by that. You know, they're not going to see that as an obstacle to um, their customers buying more uh, goods. Whereas a grocery store or an Exxon Mobil, you know, they might still, you know, kind of press the brakes. But like, we don't want to necessarily accept that quite yet um, just because we, we don't know how that's going to affect our customer base. Um, whereas like an AMC and uh, Chipotle, it's like, you know, we want to try and get as many people in as possible. Uh, the other thing I would consider uh, is that if I'm an Argentinian small business, right? Like I think the, the, the perfect example that came to my mind was an Argentinian uh, like really old restaurant, like family owned restaurant. I want to accept Bitcoin because 
the Argentinian currency is actually going down. Like yeah. it's going to be less valuable next year than uh, than it is today, right? And that's that's something they they all like the the media kind of tries to convince you the opposite of. But that's kind of what the citizens there of Argentina know to be true. Whereas Bitcoin, you know, while it's going down now, you know, they, they we anticipate that it's going to be much higher in the future. Uh, it's not t tied to a central bank that is printing money to try and bail itself out of a, 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 a uh, of an economic uh, slump, yeah. like uh, true. like like there in Argentina or here in the United States or pretty much anywhere else. So. So that's, I mean, that's interesting. I definitely would want to be accepting Bitcoin if, if, if I'm especially like a small business that's family owned um, and that, that knows that it's not going to be going out of business anytime soon. Um, so that's, you know, that's kind of my, my two cents on that. But um, I really enjoyed this. I really yeah. enjoyed being on uh, Between, Between Two, two coins, coins and I, and I hope time. that, that uh, you all New watching record. at home. Between Two Burritos, if you will. Yeah. But yeah, kind of B2B. Well, especially him, he's in the middle. So he is. I mean, they, he is the he is the, the special guest today. So. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, I think that was a I think that was a success. That was a real win. Yeah. I mean, it was a good. It was a good experiment. Again, I I joined an elite group of people that have spent Bitcoin on on food, and I'm sure that that group is leading every single day. Go. You know, if you guys want to have some fun, just have a family outing. Go get Gemini. Not sponsored by them. If there's a better one, you know, that's fine. Maybe give it a couple of days so you don't have to pay that thirty dollar instant yeah. wire transfer. Mm -hmm. I, think, I think if you wait like three days, you can do like a three dollar transfer. At least I've used Bank of America. Not sponsored by Bank of America either. I've had some frustrations with that bank too. So then yeah, go, go buy go buy some uh, go buy a burrito yeah. with some Bitcoin and tell us or what you think if it tastes better or but, tacos. Yeah, that'd be a great first date. If a girl asked me yeah. out and said That's a flex. Gonna, she was going to pay in Bitcoin, you know, I would totally say yes. That is a flex, except for the fact that he already has a girlfriend. So. <laughs> he does. He does. Yeah, I hope you. I hope Bitcoin's not the thing. In that, that hypothetical, <laughs> no, Bitcoin is the determining factor. All right. Well, of course not. Let's. Uh, yeah, this is a the good, short, nice episode to go test a liquidity issue. You know, a, a liquidity possibility in Bitcoin, uh, and uh, it was fun. But we're gonna go ahead and wrap it up for this stream. We will see you next week for I think episode eleven. You of won't see coins. me though. That's right. I won't be here next week. I am going to consensus, so I will not be shooting next week. But Smay's going to be here. I think T-Shroom's going to be in his fourth. I think T-Shroom's going to be on the show next week as well. Yeah. It's we'll going to be fun. I might get too nervous to do it, but we'll no. see. It's no. true. I'm, I'm terrible in front of the camera, yeah. as you know. All right. Well, guys, we're going to see you guys in the next video. We will be back Monday with Coffee and Crypto Live. With that being said, adios. Peace. Whoa! Look Whoa! Look at this guy. He watched the entire video. What a cool guy. I think the next thing that he wants to do is hit the like button and then probably even subscribe to the channel. And perhaps even comment down below what he thought. That, that would be pretty cool. Wow. What a cool guy.